everybody it has been so long since I have done a live video actually just about a month but um, summer kind of got crazy and so I just decided to take off some time from doing my, my live videos so I'm really not sure how many people are gonna find me today since it has been so um, long since I've done this but if you are here watching I am so glad you are here and I'm excited to show you the project that I have for you today so let me go ahead and do a couple of my shares and then we're gonna get started with a fun sewing project hey guys thanks for finding me for tuning in it has been um, a while since I have done a live show um, summer kind of got crazy and so I just decided to give myself some grace and take some time off but I am so excited to be back here with you today and Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern are gonna be a regular thing again so mark your calendars put it on your um, alarms we are gonna be back doing fun sewing shows and um, I'm so excited to be here with you today so I'm working on my shares and then I'm um, gonna show you what we're doing. Hopefully I can kind of give an introduction while I'm also doing my um, shares here today. So um, the kids went back to school today and um, just wait. <laughs> and so I'm here. So it is quiet around our house for the first time in weeks and weeks but I'm excited for the kids to be able to go um, off to school and um, enjoy their time there and I'm excited for me to get to um, be here and get some work done I'm really hoping that um, you know I can be super productive here as I have more time so <laughs> who knows all right, so let's see, this is, um, see if I can, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to share it to my groups here. It has literally been so long, I like can't even remember um, how to work this. So, <laughs> give me some time here and we will try and figure this out i don't understand what it's doing but anyway maybe we'll just go with it and um see so yes our summer was so so lovely i appreciate you guys letting me just take a little break i still tried to be um posting on um my site but i was also trying to it's like how do i how do I post to a page? Let's <laughs> see. Maybe if I switch this. Um, yeah. Anyway, it was it was really really nice just to be able to have um, some time with the kids, and we did a lot of fun things this summer. Um, and I just tried to be more present for them. So, um, like I said, I did keep posting, and the, if you've been following on my blog the last couple weeks I have been posting quite a bit of fun back to school clothes and um, other tutorials um, for back to school so if you are one of those schools that start later because I know there's a bunch of them we're not on the earliest side because I've been seeing back to school posts for what feels like too long but for a while um, and you are still thinking about sewing for back to school I do have some really fun tutorials for you so you should definitely check those out or if you just think this might be better than what you already got and want to add to something you bought so today I'm going to share with you a couple of things we're going to make a super fun zipper um, pencil pouch which I was shocked when I was at Walmart looking at pencil pouches because last year I made all of ours and I made a whole bunch of the kind that go in your three ring binder and you know what was lovely is when I pulled those out again this year they all were in great condition so I was super super impressed that what I had sewed got used for a full year and was still in great shape to be used again so that makes me 
uh, so happy to see that it really holds up and is great. So um, I have on my site, you can find a three ring binder um, pencil pouch, but today we're gonna sh sew the newest one, which I shared last week, and I made a mesh version and a vinyl version of um, this pencil case. And I mentioned in my post when I shared it last week that I had sewed two versions, one of mesh, one of vinyl, and I didn't really love either one of the fabrics. The mesh had some pretty big holes, but it was what I had on hand. So like colored pencils and things kind of get stuck through. So it's perfect, it was perfect for whiteboard markers or other big things, but not so much for smaller items. And then the vinyl was great. It's just a little bit stiff, clear, if you've ever sewed with clear vinyl, but I actually really like that. So I had mentioned that I was ordering um, some a, a cross between vinyl and mesh but it hadn't come in yet. So it's here and I'm so excited to sew with it today and tell you what I think about it. So um, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that we live for many, many years in Hong Kong. And um, this is starting our fifth school year here in the US. So we've been back here for a while, but one of the things I loved about the little like stationery stores in Hong Kong where you get your school supplies is they had all these vinyl um, pouch, zipper pouches in all different sizes. And they were generally sold to use for school supplies, but I have a bunch of these and they would be like $1.50. So really inexpensive. And I love that you can see through them. They're super strong. Like this one is full of magnet tiles, super strong. And I have all of our games and puzzles in these mess pou mesh pouches that I purchased years and years ago. So I've been on the lookout for this sort of mesh, plastic vinyl it's pretty squishy but it is really strong and a friend of mine had said um, a couple years ago oh the container store sells them well of course the container store sells them and they are not inexpensive I've also since found that you can buy them on Amazon which is great so if you're looking for game or puzzle or toy storage I highly recommend those however I have been searching for fabric to sew my own of these cases and I finally found it. So the mesh squares are a little bit bigger than the one I just showed you, but it is totally the same fabric and I'm super excited um, to show you how we're gonna make a pencil case with it today. I, I think it would also be great for totes or beach bags or anything else that you wanna be able to see inside, but no, it doesn't have any holes. It's actually a solid sheet of flexible vinyl. So a couple things about this. If you're interested in where I bought this, I am not affiliated with the company whatsoever. I just found it on a search online, but the link to this fabric is in the post, which the post is linked in the description of this video. So you can click through there. You can read all about how to make this pencil case and you can find out more about this fabric. Okay, so upon initial research, I thought, ooh, this is kind of pricey because it was 12.50, no, Maybe for a half yard, it was only $7. I don't remember. I just remember thinking it, it cost me $20 to have this shipped to my house, okay? And I didn't know really how much fabric it was gonna feel like until I got it. But I was willing to risk it because again, like I said, I've been looking for this type of fabric for so long. Like I really have been trying to make my own um, with this mesh. So when I got it, uh, so it cost me 20 bucks to get it, and I thought, well, let's just see how many cases we can make out of it. Well, upon inspecting this, it is super wide fabric. And I think I'm actually going to cut on the sort of the fold lines, which is sort of a natural division between, um, you can see how this fabric came folded. Okay. I can make six pencil cases out of this fabric that came. So a, a pencil case size. Now, if you want to make them a little bit bigger, they wouldn't be I'm quite as many, but for $20, six pencil cases, let me tell you, you can't even buy Walmart pencil cases for $3 each, okay? So I, that's again, I was shocked. So my, my one son, the zipper pull tab was off his like main pencil case. So I was thinking, I'll just buy him another one. And then I went to the store and I was one, so not impressed with the kind of cases they had. And the one that I did like was like $7.99 and it didn't even look that nice. So that's when I came home and thought, I need to figure out how to make something because $8 for a pencil case that doesn't even look like it's gonna hold up very well is not gonna work for me. So 
that's where this sort of design was born with the two pockets that I shared um, last week. And today we're going to make another one out of this mesh. So I'm just squaring up these sizes, these sides. But what we're going to do right now is we are going to cut this apart and have the three pieces that we need to make this pouch. So this design includes a side pocket and um, a side pocket and then one main pouch. And so we're gonna keep that design the same as we make this one um, out of this new fabric. So what you will need is either mesh or vinyl um, or this mesh vinyl and you will need two zippers because for this case um, we're going to need a zipper on the side and a zipper on the top okay and i don't even have the ones i sewed the other week to show you because my son took them to school today Woo! and then he said mom i don't like this one that's mesh so tonight i'm going to give him this one and he can exchange his stuff for the other one so i have two zippers they're not the same length and i think both are too long but we'll just trim them as we go. So I can, I'll can. i show you how to do that. And when you're sewing with vinyl, I love clips because sticking pins through this sort of vinyl is pretty tricky. So I'm also gonna grab my clips and we are going to head over to my sewing machines here to work on this project. Now this is a project that I sewed entirely on um, just the regular sewing machine so we're going to do that today and i see a question about needles i when i sewed the clear vinyl last week um just used a universal needle i did not even go with my heavy duty needle but um if if you're having trouble with a universal i would suggest um trying like a leather or i'm not sure do leather needles say leather vinyl or they just say leather Actually, mine just says jeans. I don't even have leather right now. I just, if I need something more powerful, I would stick on one of these jean needles. So sometimes I have a bigger variety than others, other times of needles. But we're gonna put on a um, universal needle. So in here is, uh, maybe it already was a universal needle. All right, looks the same. I wasn't sure what I had in there. We're gonna leave that. If it's not working well, we'll change it. And if we need to, we can um, adjust it again um, if, I don't think, if I don't think it's working. But this worked great when I was sewing last week with um, the clear vinyl. Now, this is actually better mesh to be sewing with. Um, it's softer and more flexible. The clear vinyl that I had is like one you can buy at the fabric store. It comes on those big rolls, and usually it's sold for like covering furniture or you know making a tablecloth or something like that and it so you can buy thicker and thinner vinyl but obviously if it's too thin it might rip and you're not going to have your project so you know i i do like the medium weight vinyl um but i'm excited to try this as well and see how it goes so first up we are going to sew the zipper onto the pocket so i will turn this sideways and all my little feet fell out here. Um, where does this one even go? I don't know. Um, okay, so we're gonna change the feet, put on my zipper foot, and actually I'm gonna leave this out because the thing about this is I did switch back and forth between a straight stitch for the zipper and then I used a zigzag to top stitch just to reinforce it and really hold down that seam allowance. So I'm going to take the pocket piece. So the two pieces I have, and again, these, these, um, you can make these any size you want, but the dimensions that I used are in the blog post. Um, these, I actually didn't use the same dimensions. I'm just using sa the same proportions. So it's not exactly the same size. So you can adjust. So we have one piece, that is a rectangle, okay, that we're gonna fold in half. That's our main pouch piece. And then we have the pocket that will go on the side that is not quite as tall as one side, but as the same width. 
Okay, so we're gonna take that. I feel like one side is stickier than the other, so I'm gonna put the least less sticky side down. And we are going to, you can use pins or clips to attach the zipper with the right sides together to one of the top edges of this pocket. And then I'm just gonna set it at a straight stitch and we're gonna go ahead and sew that on. So I don't like having to deal with the pull tab, so I'm gonna get that out of the way and then I'll move it again when I get down there. And obviously this is too long, so we will have to trim this zipper. So now I'm getting to where the pull tab is, so I'm gonna lift my foot and then pull the pull tab past so I can get it out of the way. And I don't feel too much sticking. It's feeding through pretty well. So I don't feel like I need to use any um, different like techniques to get it to pull through. If you're having trouble with your fabric sticking to your sewing machine, you can always put some tissue paper or something that will slide through underneath and then just rip that off after. So, all right, so now you can see we have the zipper attached to the vinyl and I'm gonna go ahead and press that seam allowance over to the back, okay? Because otherwise it is a little like stiff now with those two layers. So I'm pressing it over to the back. I'm gonna switch back my foot. This is why I'm keeping both of these handy. And I'm gonna switch over to a zigzag and I'm going to press that seam allowance down with my finger and then zigzag to top stitch. along here. This one feels like it's catching a little bit more, so I'm gonna use my hands to kind of help guide through there, but this sticky side is, I think, sticking to the foot. So I should, they, there are um, vinyl feet that you can get for your sewing machine that helps it to not stick. I probably need one if I'm gonna be sewing a lot of these cases. Um, I heard someone ask about what machine this is. This is the Essence 5200, and it's a combo sewing and embroidery machine, um, but I'm just using the sewing part right now. Okay, so there's our top stitching. I'm using like an uh, off-white thread, so it blends in pretty well. You can see it on the back, but again, that's the back, so you're not gonna really see that. This is the front side of our pouch. So if you use a coordinating thread, you're not even gonna really see that, but I do like how that zigzag really holds it down. And you can see here where the stitches got closer together, how it was kind of getting stuck. So I started pulling it a little bit through. Okay, so now let's um, attach the pocket to the side. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna line up the bottoms together. And I'm just gonna put a couple of clips here to hold this in place while I do the next step, okay? And then I'll go back and we'll take that out and open up this um, pouch. So now I'm going to fold this zipper over. See how I just did that? Okay, so the zipper is laying right side up. And then I'm just going to tuck it under so that the zipper is flat along the top and the other side of it is tucked under. And that is where I want my zipper placement to be sewn so that I have that sort of great side pocket zipper. So I'm gonna lift up, I've got two layers here of vinyl, lift up and clip on the side there, my zipper placement. Okay, so I'm just marking my zipper. Then I'm going to take these clips off and I'm gonna open up the zipper because we actually need to sew it with it open and we're gonna open up this pouch, okay? So now we have these two layers. Now, when I look here, this looks a little bit crooked, so I'm just gonna lower this just slightly. You know, I was just marking it based off of um, looks, so I didn't actually measure. So if you wanna make sure it's exact, you could measure down from the top of your pouch to make sure that this side and this side are exactly the same, 
And if you, you know, again, it's kind of hard to stick a pin through, but if you really want to put a mark in the middle, you could go ahead and stick a pin um, right in there. I'm just going to leave it on the two sides and hope I can keep it sort of straight across as I'm sewing. So we're going to switch back to the zipper foot. Think about which side it's going to be on. Okay, and then move. Try to keep that all connected here. Put it under the foot, and then we're going to stitch across all the way down. Oops, and I still have my zigzag on, so let's go back to the straight stitch. All right, and I feel like this is, that is the stickier side, so I'm just going to, again, use my hands. So this... <laughs> Fabric is not only sticking a little bit to the foot, although not so bad because I'm sewing on the zipper, but it definitely, if I'm pressing on it, can stick just even to the plastic on my machine. So um, if it is giving you trouble, again, put a piece of tissue paper under there and it will really help um, with any stickiness that you're experiencing. But I think I'd rather fight with it than rip off the tissue after. But personal preference on that one. All right, so there we have that. And now we can flip that down and see that we have an awesome side pocket on our zipper pouch, okay? So I like that a lot. And we're gonna need to trim this, but I'm not going to yet, because the last time I trimmed it too early and I went to turn it right side out or something and I went zip, and it zipped right off the end because I hadn't sewn it into a seam yet. And then I had to get my son to help me. Like I was trying to hold the teeth together and he was trying to put the tab back on. And thankfully we got it, but I don't have any additional hands here today. Um, so I'm going to be real careful about when I trim this extra zipper off. Um, yeah, tracing paper, tissue paper, all those things would stop the sticking. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm matching up the top edges of this again. So I have sort of my top edge. And then... We are going, what? It looks like it's overlapping more than it was. I don't know, maybe I measured it wrong. I thought I had it lined up, but apparently not very well. We are going to sew the pocket to the bottom of this so that um, we don't have a hole in the bottom of our pocket, okay? So you could cut these pieces separate so that you're just sewing a bottom, bottom seam. But I like just to leave the fold and then sewing the pocket onto the fold. So I'm going to, with my zigzag, go back and stitch the pocket layer to the fold layer of the main bag part, okay? And I'm gonna have to make sure I'm feeding this through again. I wonder if I should, this is pretty thick here. All right, I'm gonna grab some tissue paper. Because it's no longer fun. No longer fun to be fighting with this. And then I'll show you how this works. So I have this tissue paper on hand for, um, I use it for tracing my patterns. Now, it could still stick to this foot, but I'm hoping that if it's only sticking on one part, we're fighting a lot less than it also sticking on the bottom. So definitely is helping the bottom glide along. I can still feel that it's pulling and a little bit sticking to the bottom of my foot. But again, if you had a vinyl foot, that would fix that. So a vinyl foot and some tissue on the bottom and you'll be all set. But it depends on what kind of vinyl. I've sewed other vinyl and it really does not stick or have problems, but this one is definitely giving me a run for my money on the stickiness. So then you just pull that right off. Okay, and get rid of that. Again, I'm using hopefully a color that blends in with my vinyl trimming any extra fabric that's hanging over the bottom of the pouch. And we are looking good on how this pouch is coming together. Okay, so at this point, 
Um, we're gonna sew the zipper on the top and then we're gonna sew the side, side seams. But you can also decide if when you sew the side seams, are you gonna flip it inside out or are you gonna just have the side seams exposed, right? Either way, they're exposed because it's clear vinyl. So you're gonna see it a little bit, but how much do you wanna see it or not see it? Up to you. All right, well, we're gonna start with the zipper first. Um, so I'm going to match up right sides together with the zipper and the outside of the pouch. Okay, and I am choosing to put my zipper tabs both on the same side. So we're gonna open up this so we're only sewing to one side of the pouch. And let's put some tissue underneath just because we know that is helpful. And now I won't have it sticking to the top because we're sewing on the zipper. Okay, so we are eliminating some of the issues that we had when we were sewing just on the vinyl. So this should stitch along really nicely and going back to the straight stitch, back stitching, moving my pull tab back. Okay, and then I get to the end, back stitch, and open it up. We'll pull off that. There might be a little bit more picking to do on this later, but I'm just gonna try to get the big chunks off. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna top stitch again, because I really think on these zippers that you can see it lays so much nicer. If we open this up, press the seam allowance back, and um, zigzag. So again, this method has quite a bit of exchanging the feet, but if I just keep it handy, it's not too bad. So I'll switch back my zipper foot or my zigzag. I'm just using my fingers to press the seam allowance over. I have not tried to iron vinyl, so I really, I can't see plastic ironing well. I can't see that ending well. So I'm just going to stick with my finger fold over and then sewing it down so it can't, can't go anywhere. I will sew it into submission here to do what I want it to do. And this time the bottom isn't sticking because the zipper is um, going along, but the top is a little bit because that's on my foot. But how cute is that side of the zipper pouch? This fabric is everything I hoped it would be um, for this sort of project. So now we have this and we're gonna take this back side of the pouch and fold it up and over. So again, our right sides are touching, right side of the zipper, right side of the pouch. It's currently inside out, so we will have to flip that back right side out, but this gets us so that we can sew the second side of the zipper. And trying to think here, which side do I wanna sew on? The vinyl? I think I'm gonna put the vinyl down so I can put this on it and see if I can sew up here on the zipper. All right, so make sure, oops, on the zigzag. Back stitching. I'm actually shocked I can zigzag with the zipper foot. It must, which is a good thing, because otherwise I would have been crashing into my foot multiple times. Um, back stitching to make sure that zipper is really held in place. You know how zippers get a lot of wear and tear as they're opened and closed. So we wanna make sure. Again, if you're interested in um, the dimensions that I used or the photo tutorial or where I found this fabric, you can get all that information um, on the blog post, which is linked in the description of this video. Okay, so this is where I was like, I'm gonna open this to turn it right side out. And I went bzz, and my zipper that I had already cut, I just pulled the tab right off. So I'm really glad 
I did not cut those tabs yet. This is making it way easier. We still do have to trim our zippers, but let's not do it until we absolutely have to. Okay, so now the last thing, the step we have to do on the zipper is flip the seam allowance over and zigzag that seam allowance. And then we are finished with our zippers and we just have to sew the side seams. So if you were mass producing these, I really think, because last year I did sort of a mass production of the three, um, three prong binder pouches. And like I said at the beginning, they have all held up so well. So I was pleased we got one school year out of them and I'm even more pleased that it looks like we're gonna get two school years out of them. Um, but anyway, so this is our last step with the, involving the zipper and then we just have to sew the side seam. So I really do think if you were making several of these and you had them all cut out, you really could whip out several of these within a short amount of time and um, just make some great zipper pouches. And I'm so excited now to have a source for this fabric so that if I want to sew custom size like game or puzzle pouches, that I totally can do that. And I have a whole half yard of fabric to play with, so I'm excited. All right, so we're going to zip this back closed. How awesome does this look? Totally looks like the real deal like right i bought this in a store and it's a fun mesh whatever's in here you can like see but not it's not going to fall out okay and it's not like crystal clear so two things one you could turn this right sides together and make sure you leave the top open on your second side um, but you could sew the side seams like this, sew those right up to um, ha then turn it and then your side seam is in the middle. I did that last time. So I'm actually going to try sewing the side seams just on top of the vinyl. And if we see it and don't like it, we can always like cover it with a little bit of duct tape or something to add a cute um, project on there. So I'm going to leave it on the zigzag. I'm gonna sew close to the edge, right? So I'm gonna set, and if I don't get all the way to the edge, I'm gonna trim my seam allowance nice and tight. The only thing we're being a little bit aware of is when we get to those zippers, we're gonna really stitch down the ends of those zippers. I'm actually gonna back stitch on that zipper so that it doesn't come undone and I don't want any weirdness with the zipper tab. So if you want to see how it looked with the seams on the inside, you can go ahead and um, check out my original one. I did do the clear vinyl and I did flip it right side out. So um, if you want to see the other sort of option, again, I'm going to trim off. I don't have anything I think that's really going to fray on here. Okay, so there is one side of my pouch and now I'm going to sew the other side and I'm going to leave these all together. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about with not flipping it is will my stitching hold the zipper? We're definitely gonna have to, um, oh, something here's FedEx. We're definitely gonna have to back stitch lots and lots over this zipper, right? Because it's becoming the zipper stopper. So I'm going over this several times here on the end. Okay. Now let's. Nope. It got caught up in itself. So I think it has good potential to make that be a zipper stopper, but let's re-thread. Kind of got jammed. Um, my machine's probably like, what is this strange material? And why are you going over and over and over the same spot? Continue down the side. Mm -hmm. 
and then we're going to get to our second zipper. Now, I would not recommend sewing over the zipper like I am if you're not using a plastic small zipper. These are not like heavy heavy duty zippers by any means, which means they're pretty easy to sew over. So if you are using like a fat plastic zipper, like a decorative chunky one, which I totally have before, um, or if you're using a metal zipper, you absolutely cannot sew over the teeth. So just be aware what kind of zipper you're choosing. These are just craft zippers from Amazon. Nothing fancy at all in the zipper department. Okay, so we'll trim that up. I'm gonna cut my zippers now. I'm gonna carefully test, <laughs> carefully test my zipper stops. But okay, so there we are, super cute, really easy. Just some straight stitches, there's the back side. And I can imagine this in like so many different sizes, right? Like paper size and this is pencil marker, scissors size, but let's see if my, yeah, I feel like because of the stitching and the vinyl, it doesn't even really wanna go like all the way to the end. So I'll have to report back after my son uses this for a while, if it really is as sturdy as I think it is. Did he pull the zipper tab right off or not? But two awesome functioning pockets with a really cute little easy mesh pencil case. And again, when you make your own, you can create any size that you want for um, sort of any project. So that's my tiptoeing back into Facebook Lives today. I'm so excited you were here to join me. Thank you for being part of this. And again, if you're interested in this or finding out where I got this fun mesh vinyl, um, the link, no affiliation of mine, um, I just found it online and I actually really have enjoyed sewing with it, is in the post as well as the vinyl and the mesh that I used for the ones pictured, but I'll have to add a picture um, of this pocket as well to the post because it's really a great addition and um, good information. So thank you so much. I will, um, how would you do it to be able to attach to a ring binder? Uh, Mary, so go, if you click to this post, there's um, a list of other sewing tutorials that are um, regarding back to school and the three ring binder one is right in there. I mean, you could always just put three grommet rings right in this one, punch it out, but I do have a specific post um, for a three ring binder pencil case, okay? So you can find that link um, in the link in this post. So look, just look up or go to lifesosavory.com and search binder pencil case and you will find it. So thank you so much for spending my first quiet day of the school year with me. I'm so glad you guys were here. And um, you can add back on your calendars that Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, I will be here sewing and I'm excited for a great fall of sewing tutorials ahead. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.